right, man. So Burrell Holmes was on 97 won the ticket, and he said that they stayed packed at receiver because they liked the guys that they got. He spoke on a couple guys that I've been speaking on, and you know, what was my message when I said should the Lions add something at receiver? I said, nope, trust the development of you know, you know, Raymond, you know, he's came in and played, you know, a big role in the past, especially that first golf first year, Holmes first year when Tyrell Williams went down and the 49ers game was never heard from again. Again, also, uh, I said, trust Antoine Green. I'm going to speak on that because he spoke on him. Now I'm a people's zones and Jameson Williams. So, you know, we know what my Amara Ra going to do. Uh, also, you got the kid that was on the practice squad from Eastern and all that. So, you got some guys there. I mean, they had opportunities to sign guys like Odell. They had opportunities to try to, you know, will and deal for Mike Evans last offseason. They had opportunities to, um, you know, uh, draft certain guys. You know, they could have drafted Xavier Leggett if they wanted to, I believe, or he was right around there. Um, I thought they was taking Jerry Rice's son when they moved up for one of those draft picks. I think it was Manu or uh, they took the kid from Utah. So, they didn't. They felt good about where they was at. And at the end of the day, you added Mike Evans. Then you say, well, why the hell did you move up and draft a Jameson Williams? So he basically said that they like the guys that they got. He said they feel like Jameson Williams is coming on very, very strong. And that uh, that they're going to trust this development going into year three. So they feel like he coming on real, real strong. Um, they like where he at. And the only issue is... Where do we where do we get to play on the outside receiver? That's the problem. You know, and playing outside, it ain't a matter of size. I mean, you got some guy, you know, it's not a matter of size. It's a matter of can you beat press coverage? I mean, Deshaun Jackson was able to do it. Um, Hollywood Brown is another guy. You know, he's the most popular guy in the guy in the world able to do it. Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. You know what I'm saying? So can you that's the, just the number one thing for a lot of these guys. That's the only thing about the offense I feel that's holding them back is being able to have guys on the outside that can win off the line of scrimmage. It's different than going on the inside because you can go left, you can go right. You know, you can take different degree angles too. So you can, you know, on the outside, you got that boundary. So he got that 12th defender to help him, you know, redirect you. You know what I'm saying? On the inside, it's oop, oop, oop. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, and then, you know, it's only so much motion you can do, too, because, you know, they put them, put them in motion so they can get a free release if you didn't know that. They bunch them up so they can get a free release if you didn't know that. When you playing outside, that's what made Marvin Harrison such a great receiver. He lined up to Peyton Manning's right every time. And couldn't nobody really stop him. <laughs> nobody could stop him. He lined up the same time. He ain't moving. He ain't in motion, you know. Marvin is right there. And Marvin at what about six foot? He beating everybody. And that's the challenge that every lion receiver got, probably not named DPV, Diamond DPJ, Diamond Peoples Jones. That's the every challenge each lion got. Amar Ross St. Brown. That's the that's the only thing that's holding him back. Can he be a receiver on the outside like a golden tape was doing for Detroit? Everything else on the inside, irky jerky, you can do it. But on the outside, can he consistently be the guy and beat outside corners? Jameson Williams, that's the question. Can he get off press coverage on the outside? Yeah, you know, that's only cool. That's like if if J Mo can win on the outside or St. Brock win on the outside, there may be a case for him to be the best receiver in the league. That's the only thing that he's missing. And Jameson Williams, if he can win on the outside, it's pretty much a wrap. But if I got to scheme it up where I got to bunch him up, put him in the inside, Move them around and get a free release. That holds back the true offensive potential. This is why guys that really know football was like, oh, if they get a Mike Evans or they get somebody on the outside, it's a wrap. That way, guess what? He's your dominant receiver on the outside. He could dominate outside the hashes and down the field. And they, you know, you could do everything else you need to do over there because they're going to roll coverage to him or they're going to, you know, pay attention to what you're doing in the backfield, running the football. So, um, my whole thing is you, you drafted a guy, you moved up to draft a guy high, trust the development. Trust the development. He also said that it doesn't mean at some point, you know, they may not bring another receiver in, but they like what they got. You know, Cleve Ramis has some success in this league on the outside. You know, like I said, in, in the first year here, um, you know, he spoke on Donovan Peoples-Jones. He said what I continue to say, 
is that he just, you know, he was pretty good in Cleveland, you know, especially that one year he almost had, he was close to what, eight, 900 yards, almost a thousand yards, but he just didn't have the time in, you know, in Detroit to, to really form that rapport with Jared Goff. You know, the difference, the reason why, Josh Riddles hit the ground rudder so good is because him and Jared Goff used to play together in L.A. So they got some type of rapport. You know, so you start talking about, you know, diving people's jones coming in the middle of the season. It's different if you say, oh, let me get a pass rusher. Let me get a, a, a run stopper. That's different. Even if I get a corner, it only so many coverage. He says, I'm a run. The only issue you're going to really have in cornerback is just zone coverage. Is learning, learning how to communicate, but you just saying go play man, they'd be all right. They'd be all right. But when you talk about a receiver, it's timing. Where you like the ball at? If we throw this back shoulder, if I throw it up to go get it, where you like it at? Pause. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. So hopefully him and golf can form some rapport. I think everybody that's a Michigan fan, you know, we know the potential of Diamond Peoples-Jones. You know, we know what he can do Truly, with the ball in his hand. You know, South to Nico Collins from balling. You know, Tyree Black was another guy who was ultra-talented. You know, the, the, the guy just can never stay healthy. You know, seemed like he put the work in physically. But if he can, you know, he's one of those bigger receivers like Brad Holmes said, can make contested catches. Explosive receiver, get down the field, got the size to win down the field. The issue is durability. In Detroit, the issue his whole career, the issue in Detroit is just getting familiar the familiarity with Jerry Goff. That's it. So, if he can get him familiar with Goff and he can get on the same page, which I don't understand why why they wouldn't. He seemed to be a hard worker. Goff seemed to be a hard worker. Um, they 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 you know they should be able to count on him as long as he can physically hold up. And then he spoke on Antoine Green. He said the world then you know seeing that he possibly didn't get a lot of targets. But he said internally and what he's done, you know, behind the scenes and in, in the practice and stuff, and that's probably why he remained act, an active part of the roster all last season. They felt really, really good. Excuse me. They felt really, really good about where he is developing. So they plan on Antoine Green, like I said, coming in next season to and, and contributing. And I just, you just think about it. He active damn near every week. He got a couple, you know, routes out there. But obviously his preparation, and then naturally we seen in preseason was versus Carolina. His speed, he's a stick of dynamite. You know what I'm saying? You seen, you know, speed wise what he can do. So really, it's just you know once again learning how to beat press, learning how to run routes, learning to be where you need to be. And if he can learn where he need to be, got the physical tools coming in and out of breaks. You know, make yourself quarterback friendly and available and earning that trust. And if he can do that, I mean. You fine with that. You don't want to add salary when you don't really need to add salary yet. You know your staple, your bread and butter is gonna be the running game. You know your other bread and butter is gonna be well your Texas Roadhouse bread and butter is the running game, your cheddar biscuits when they was in a prime. Remember that Ruby Tuesday uh bread with the honey honey butter, whoever old enough, remember that sit in Fairlane, whatever whatever else, you know, that's gonna be, you know, Sam LaPorter and a mod Ross St. Brown. So really now you asking Okay, how are we going to generate plays outside the hashes? And you moved up to get Jamison Williams. You took Antoine Green and what, the sixth, seventh round of North Carolina, explosive player. And Diamond Peoples Jones has always been a first round, physically a first round talent. It's just that opportunity and durability has been an issue for him throughout his career. So, yeah, you, you go with the young guys. Wherever you can save salary, because for injuries and, and for potential other weak spots, last offseason, it was about what? being a better run defense this offseason it was about shoring up the back end and in, in the midst of all of that they found guys like rodrigo they found guys like Derek barnes they found signed guys like alex anazoni they drafted jack campbell so that that middle level james houston that middle that middle level has been materializing you hope the back end it gels and they, they, you know, materialize and they, they form a, a bond and family ship on the back end. It's a lot of talent back there on paper. Then the front end, you just continue to put the work in there and, and hopefully the chips lie where they may, you know, fall where they may lie at. But, uh, but honestly, you know, and I've said, I said this in another video, the transition of the offensive line is in, in and they transitioning. You know, y'all may not really fully see it. You know, Frank may retire next year. Uh, the guard they got from Baltimore is here for a good time, probably not a long time. 
So well is ready to go to the left side. They're talking about golf contract. Taylor Decker on the last year of his deal. You know, you drafted the Manu guy. You're developing him. You drafted Corey Soares deal. You're developing him. Graham Glasgow, you bring him in. He's a guard slash center that possibly could take over until your regular guard is ready to take over. So really, they in the really you know trend. They really in the transition mode as far as the offensive line. You can't pay everybody what they feel like they worth. So really, offensively, offensive line is transitioning. The receiver room is transitioning. Really, is well, I won't say transit. It's developing. So you know, see J Mo, you know, do his thing. Now Green do his thing. Now you may see Donovan Peoples Jones growing his role. So really, you know, they're all fantastic athletes. So. You know, now you kind of seeing some things and some turnover or some type of transition or development. And, um, you know, uh, it, it'll be very interesting. So, um, but yeah, check out the Trey Lions Talk playlist. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. And the subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit on notifications. Increase your chance. Get notifications. We go live or drop video. Financially, you want to support the channel. Cash app, dollar sign, CJ Good 313 Memo CJ Good 313 PayPal link in description. Hit the link tree. Find me on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor Cash at Venmo PayPal. Peace.